Hello and welcome to this very special feature. Do you know that cataract is the number one cause of blindness across the world, including that in India, with millions of people getting affected by it? So what is cataract or motia as a lot of people call it? Why is it so prevalent and what can be done about it? To know it all, we have with us in this very special feature today, someone who's a veteran, a pioneer in this field. Please join me in welcoming on board to answer all the questions we have about cataract today, Chairman and Medical Director, Center for Sight Chain of Eye Hospitals, Padmashree, Professor Dr. Mahipal Sachdev. Thank you so much, sir. First, for making time out of your schedule and being here with us. I would straight away dive into the first question that comes into mind is that why is cataract such a big cause of blindness, not just in India, but all across the world? So, uh, thank you very much. In the first instance, I would wish to say that what is cataract? Cataract means any clouding of the normal natural crystalline lens. Within the eye, there is a focusing lens which is called as a crystalline lens. With age, what happens is that this lens which has proteins, these proteins start to become clumpy or they get denatured. Because they get clumpy or because they get denatured, therefore the lens which was originally transparent becomes cloudy. Okay. So this cloudiness of the lens is called as cataract. Now the leading cause of this cloudiness is age. With age, given a long enough age, like our hair go grey, similarly this lens is going to go grey or it is going to become opaque and given a long enough life, all of us are going to develop cataract. So this is what is called as senile cataract. There are other causes of cataract. Even children can be born with cataract, which are called as developmental or congenital cataract. Uh, Diwali, Dussehra season, etc. Uh, cracker injuries, bow and arrow injuries. Uh, there can be injuries in factories, etc. So you can have traumatic cataract. That means because the lens has got injured, so therefore it becomes opaque. Then there are certain metabolic diseases, for example, diabetes, thyroid, etc., which can also increase the uh, incidence or get the cataract like COVID. A uh, lot of people had steroids. So these steroid intake can also precipitate the onset of cataract. So the opacification of the lens is called as cataract. And why we are having so many cases of cataract is because longevity is increasing and the lenses are going grey or opaque and therefore we are getting cataract so that's a normal uh, normal phenomenon. One important thing that you need to understand is that for reasons which are not fully known, Indians tend to de develop cataract maybe 10 years earlier than their westerners. Uh, it could be genetic, it could be a lot of sunshine, it could be malnutrition in childhood, etc. But there are several factors which one doesn't know, but we tend to develop cataract slightly earlier than what the Western population does. Sure. Now, the magnitude is pretty large. India does about 75 lakhs of cataract surgeries a year. And that is China, US and Europe put together. So that's the kind of numbers that we are doing and uh, we have uh, only close to about 30,000 ophthalmologists in India out of which you can say maybe about 18 to 20,000 are operating surgeons. So there's a lot of load that is there for each surgeon that is uh, in India doing these cataract surgeries. Unfortunately, there are claims which are touted by people that by putting this or that drop, you can have the cataract go away. Right. As of today, there is no medical cure. Let me re-emphasize, despite these false claims, there are people who put homeopathic medicine, there are people who put Ayurvedic medicine, but there is no known medicine today which can retard or reverse the process of this clouding of the lens. Right. This is like you are changing age. Like there is nothing which is anti-aging just now people age. Similarly, the, the lens of the eye has to age and a person will develop cataract. So the only treatment that is there today is to do surgery. And therefore, in the absence of the facilities to do surgeries across India, maybe totally in the rural population, etc., etc., this remains one of the leading cause of blindness. Fortunately or unfortunately, whatever way you want to put it, it is unfortunate that this is a reversible cause of blindness and we are not able to cater to all the blind people. But the fortunate part is that if you do get a cataract surgery, you will get your vision back. 
How do how does one know that one's getting cataract? What are the symptoms of it? So the main symptom of a person getting cataract is painless, progressive diminution of vision. That means it's not a sudden process, it's a slow onset, gradual, gradual diminution of vision. Then a person would maybe go to an optician and say, okay, my glass power is changing. So there could be frequent changes of glasses. There could be a diurnal fluctuation that a person may see better during the day and see worse at night or vice versa, depending on the type of cataract which is there. Then you could see multiple images from the same eye. So that is uniocular, that means from one eye, uniocular diplopia means doubling or polyopia. And sometimes you also see colored halos. Okay. So these are the symptoms. If the cataract goes bad, which is a rare situation, that means that jo safed motia, which is cataract, turns into a glaucoma, hmm. which is also known as kala motia. Right. Then the pressure of the eye goes up and the person can have sudden deterioration of vision. That is because of the lens getting swollen. But otherwise, painless progressive diminution of vision is the main uh, symptom that a patient has. How intensive, uh, Dr. Sajdev, is a cataract surgery, the procedure itself? Okay, so if I say, if we look at uh, cataract surgery, there have been phenomenal advances in cataract surgery. Cataract surgery actually started out of India. That is India's, uh, I would say, day into the world and that is Shushrut. Shushrut was the person who started cataract surgery by a simple procedure called as couching. So cataract, uh, the center of the eye and the pupil through which the light is going, there is a cataractus lens there. So what he did was they put a needle there and he would dislocate or throw back the lens within the eye. Mm. So this pupil then became clear. Instead of a, like a curtain here, the curtain would be into one. That was uh, what uh, Shushud did. And there on the cataract surgery have evolved. Significant evolution since maybe even when we were doing uh, our post-graduation that that time there was an intracapsular cataract surgery where the entire lens was removed in one uh, one go or it was in a single piece. Mm. And then the patient was given thick soda, uh, uh, soda glass like uh, lenses, uh, old movies you might have seen 10 plus 10 power lenses that were right. worn outside in the glasses, right. which obviously didn't give good quality of work. So there have been bifold, I would say, uh, uh, improvement in the technique and technology of cataract surgery. The first thing is that the cataract is not removed en block as a single piece. Now the cataract is broken up into small little pieces with the power of laser or something called as phaco emulsification. We, we crush the cataract into small pieces and suck it out through a small incision. Okay. So the incision has shrunk from a larger incision which was say uh, maybe which was covering half the eye from the uh, from 0 to 180 degree it has now shrunk to only 2 or 2.2 millimeters. Okay. So this incision because you have broken or pulverized the lens you have emulsified the lens. The word that is used is phaco emulsification. Phaco means lens, emulsification means to break it into small pieces. So you are able to suck it out through a small incision. Now this small incision is self-sealing. It's like a pressure cooker. So if the, you can push out the thing, but it, when it closes, it seals. So the surgery has now become uh, not that we are using any uh, uh, general anesthesia in these cases. Earlier, the surgeries were done under general anesthesia. Even today, say in England, some places they are still doing under general, but we are now doing it under. Then it went on to giving an injection around the eye to make the eye immobile. Now we are doing it just by drop anesthesia. Okay. That means you are just putting anesthetic drops onto the eye and the patient is supposed to look at the microscope. It has totally become a microscopic surgery. It has therefore, under topical anesthesia, we are doing the surgery. So this is no stitch, no injection, no patch, walk-in, walk-out kind of a surgery. So that's the kind of dimensions it has been changed that you can today do a cataract surgery by taking drop anesthesia. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes and you crush the cataract into small pieces, suck it out. And from where you have sucked out the cataract, you are putting an artificial lens which is called as an intraocular lens so the person doesn't have to wear thick glasses. So that is what the procedure is and the highest pinnacle that is there after phaco emulsification or micro incision cataract surgery is what is called as femto laser assisted cataract surgery. So with the help of a laser which is called as a femto laser 
we are doing certain steps of the cataract then which makes it more precise more accurate and the outcomes are much more uh, better and it is more gentle on the eye um, thank you dr sujdi for elaborating so well on how the surgery happens and what about post surgery how is the visual rehabilitation post surgery earlier when the cataract surgery was done and there was a larger incision people were put in sandbags like your head there were no sutures at that time etc so there was an incision so that the internal parts of the eye don't come out so the patient was supposed to be immobile and the heads were not moving therefore typically these surgeries were not done in monsoons or in summer etc etc but now as i told you that the incision has shrunk to about 2 mm or 2.2 mm there is no stitch etc required there is no irritation etc the eye looks pretty white that means that there isn't any congestion redness etc the next day and typically uh, barring some unforeseen circumstances the patient recovers a lot of vision within 24 hours or within few hours of the surgical procedure there is no bed rest that is required so you can go ahead and you can kind of resume your normal activities uh, uh, within a day or two etc but uh, the post operative you have to put certain eye drops which are there from 4 to 6 weeks uh, rehabilitated glasses whatever little amount that is required if at all uh, are normally given at 2 to 3 weeks post operatively but there is uh, it's reasonably lot of people have resumed their activities the next day or the day after so that's uh, the kind of uh, speed at which the visual rehabilitation is happening and uh, the Uh, no need for immobilization or putting the patient to bed is there okay and uh, this, there's a lot of information around if you go searching around uh, on net about cataract is it true that uh, you have to look at the weather before you perform the surgery so briefly i had just alluded to you from the point of view of uh, how the surgery was done earlier etc so therefore uh a because the patient had to be immobilized earlier this i am talking about decades ago uh, uh and there weren't air conditioners and thing like that so the uh, it was normally preferred to be done in winter the second thing was because the incision was larger and uh, even surgeries were done in railway stations as i would tell you cataract surgeries or they were done in schools or temporary places which are not uh, done anymore etc so the chances of infection were much higher when there was hot humid environment so therefore what was uh, uh, a myth which is now no longer the uh, the kind of patients we still do more patients during the winters because the people old people still have those myths but that is shrinking now uh, weather has no effect whatsoever on the surgical outcomes because there is no longer immobilization there is required there is no longer sutures there is no longer and most of us have uh, good weather conditions within the house so there is absolutely no specific indication that you have to wait for this particular season to get the surgery done it can be done at any time any of the time. year and dr sarshif another fact check is it true that you have to perform the surgery only when the cataract has matured i think this again is a myth that needs to be rectified uh we do not wait for the cataract to mature in today's circumstances to do the surgery the surgery is indicated as and when an individual has difficulty in performing day to day activities nobody today wants to go bone blind and not be able to see anything and leave one's work etc to get the so basically if the cataract is totally mature that means you are not seeing anything okay okay so uh people are active now even at 65 70 75 they want to do work so if you are not able to read write watch television drive etc whatever is coming in your way in your normal activities you should go ahead and get your cataract surgery done okay now why is this concept changed so suddenly as i told you in the beginning of our discussion was that when a cataract is matured there are certain zonules which are 360 degree around the cataract which hold the lens in position as the cataract keeps on maturing that means it's aging these zonules also become weak okay so it is very easy to break these zonules so we were taking out this lens or cataract as a single piece so therefore when the cataract matured you were able to tumble out this entire uh, lens and easily break the zonules without disturbing the back part of the eye which is the vitreous absolutely okay so that's what used to happen right now when we moved on from the earlier surgery to phacoemulsification 
where we are also implanting a lens earlier we were not implanting a lens now we are implanting a lens so if you conceptualize say a fruit let's look at a coconut so you slice off the top of the coconut that's like making an opening in the anterior capsule of the lens the lens is also enveloped by a capsule so you are making an opening in the interior part of the capsule going in with a phaco or with a laser breaking the cataract into small pieces and sucking it out now this leaves behind an empty envelope like you have the outer chilka of a coconut or whatever so this is going to give you the support for the artificial lens the artificial lens is now implanted into the same empty envelope that is there so we want the envelope to be rigidly in place that means that the zonules need to be strong and we do not wish the capsule to move or out after the lens has been implanted for times to come later on also so therefore the situation today is totally reversed we would like to operate the cataract at an immature stage and keep the capsule intact so that that becomes the support for the artificial lens the second thing is that the, as the cataract keeps on maturing the cataract tends to become harder it becomes the proteins become more compact it could be as hard say like a beetle nut so breaking that into small little pieces becomes more difficult it needs more energy to break that and that causes collateral damage to the other parts of the eye that means the cornea etc so the recovery becomes slower right. so today's world please get your cataract operated as and when you are having difficulty in your day to day activities do not wait for the cataract again do not wait for the cataract to mature because that will be counterproductive both for you in your life as also your being ability to do things mm -hmm. as also for the surgeon to do a good surgical procedure right and since you touched upon technology so much so one use of this femto cataract uh, surgery is that the most advanced technology that we have available and where do you see technology in this field going ahead so uh, if you look at technology the biggest thing in ophthalmology is that there are ways and means by which you can visualize any part of the eye and because you can visualize any part of the eye there are ways and means by which you can deliver the the light is a powerful source of light of the same frequency which you are able to deliver on different parts of the eye so what has happened now is that there is a laser which is called as femto second laser femto is a quantification of time and femto like you have these delivery which is called zepto this is still faster so this is called as femto femto is 1 quadrillionth of a second okay 10 to the power minus 15 so that is the brevity of the pulse the femto second names comes from because this pulse one pulse of this laser is fired for only 1 quadrillionth of a second it is a very high intensity high power pulse which is able to make openings in the lens which is able to break the nucleus into small little pieces it is able to make incisions in the cornea so that is the femto second laser uh, technology Fem it's called as flax femto laser assisted cataract surgery which is a semi robotic kind of a surgery where you are first getting an in vivo that means a real time image of the cataract you are getting a real time image of the cataract of the front part of the eye and accordingly the machine is putting as to how where how much should be cut or how much should be the slicing and how much it is and that is a semi robotic surgery which has made it much more perfect uh, much more precise uh though there is a cost involved so it has not become the standard of care but anybody who can afford is going in for those procedures majority of my procedures i would say 70 to 80% are with femto laser uh yes it has equalized surgeons i would say because the skill set in doing this is slightly less than what you were you were doing uh, earlier but then there are four critical steps of the cataract surgery which are done by the femto laser So you elaborated very well on the surgical procedure uh, Dr Mehpal but what about post the surgery how does the visual rehabilitation move Okay so uh, nowadays almost every cataract surgery from where you are taking out the cataract you are supplanting or implanting an artificial intraocular lens within the eye okay Again there is a story to this through the development of intraocular lens after world war 2 uh, an intern was watching a cataract surgery being done by sir harold ridley in england and 
the cataract was taken out and that's about it the the uh, the surgery ended there and then the person was supposed to wear thick glasses afterwards so the intern uh, asked out of ignorance he said sir are you not going to replace this by another artificial by something uh, to replace this so uh, sir herald reddy saw a world war uh, veteran uh, an air pilot who had uh, a piece of shattered glass be lying in the eye Gee. it was inert it was not causing any reaction okay and this question from the intern made him think about it that because this is a piece of perspex of plastic if we mold it like the glasses of the lenses and we mold it and put it within the eye and because it is a dirt then you may obviate the need of putting thick glasses after cataract surgery and therefore the term or the new technology that came in was called as intraocular lens that means that within the eye you are implanting an artificial lens, lens. okay and this is something that is pure part and parcel there has been several uh, uh, kind of uh, in, in improvements in this intraocular lens technology now we have foldable lenses like i told you that the incision has shrunk therefore the artificial lens which was made of plastic earlier perspex the same thing with which the glass windows of the aeroplanes are made it is now made of acrylic material or earlier of silicon which could be folded on itself and you can shove it through a small incision 2 mm and then when it goes it opens to its full size so therefore we have foldable intraocular lenses which make the incision small now in the optical principles you have these lenses which we can measure by instruments as to what should be the power of the lens that needs to be implanted in the eye by certain pre operative parameters so that the person needs very little glasses uh, for use subsequently so earlier the lenses were only monofocal lenses that means that the lenses would correct the distance vision but a person would still need glasses for reading right then came in binocular lenses or bifocal lenses and now we have trifocal lenses because world has changed to smartphones so you have actually three distances one is distance one is intermediate computer laptops etc or phones and the third is reading so now you have lenses which have optically been created on the same 6 mm platform which is the lens that is being put into the eye which give you three different focuses so that is for distance intermediate and near and therefore with these lenses you are reducing the dependence on glasses post operatively so we are able to get a patient significantly off glasses with the cataract surgery and now also you know something like uh, in the glasses you have a cylindrical power so similarly the lenses that are available today are called as toric intraocular lenses so you if a person needs a cylindrical power you can even use this toric intraocular lenses which can be either of the monofocal variety or the trifocal variety so there has been these two parallel streams which have gone one is the technology of cataract surgery and the second is the visual rehabilitation technology in the field of intraocular lenses that you are able to give the patient fantastic vision it's like getting a patient until of course there is some retinal pathology or some other pathology he can see as good as when he was say 20 years old thank you so much professor dr mehpal sachdev for sharing such key insights on this very very important topic of cataract with us thank you so much again for your time thank you moving ahead what we understand is that with the right awareness and the right technology we can tackle the very important challenge of cataract that lies ahead of not just of india but all over the world and we can enhance the vision of india and we can do that without compromising on our life experiences thank you again and thanks for watching